Hello artists, how are you today? It's Stephanie on you once again, coming to you here from the banks of the Trinity River near Willow Creek, California. Ozzy and I welcome you to the studio. Well, all right, here was another one of those backgrounds. Now, I did love that background, but I just could not figure out what to incorporate into it. I really couldn't. I tried. And uh, so I decided that... Um, this image, I've had this image in my stash now again for at least a year, if not a little bit longer. And I've always wanted to use it, and so I decided to do my final gesso transfer in the book. And this is the Valkyrie. It's uh, interesting, I actually have friends that uh, call me a Valkyrie, and that's, I've just been through some physical battles and uh, <laughs> so it, it definitely holds a special place in my heart. So I put down the gesso. I put the gesso uh, in kind of a radiating off of her and then I let the gesso dry completely. Now I've done this a few times so if you want to see that step uh, rubbing off the background. Definitely check out some of my earlier videos. I think just maybe a couple weeks ago I did it. So I, I decided this time not to show all of the peeling off of the paper. You just have to take your time and you really have to make sure that it is absolutely dry. This one turned out perfect. So I'm taking my Distress Crayons and I want to give her a golden background and uh, I'm taking the distress crayons I'm putting a little bit of water dipping my finger in water to kind of get it to smooth around and that gesso does have that texture to it because I did kind of that radiating lines from the center and it's picking up really cool of course I do play with it quite a bit more but I decided I wanted to add I wanted it to be a little bit brighter you know kind of like she's coming through the clouds. So I'm bringing in some more gesso and I'm actually kind of incorporating the gesso into the transfer just a little bit because what I'm doing is I'm making the two be one. Because sometimes, you know, after you fussy cut the um, image out, sometimes you kind of get a ridge line, uh, you know, where the ink is left behind. And of course you guys know I use a laser jet printer on standard copy paper whenever I'm doing my gesso transfers. And I actually think I have a series playlist on gesso transfers. So be sure to check those out if you're interested in more info. So I've used that gesso to kind of lighten everything up but also to kind of blend in that background uh, to blend the foreground and background together. My words are not coming out very quickly. So I'm just layering color as you guys know that I like to do. I keep building it up, building it up until it gets to where I want it. Again, Valkyrie, they you know, walk through the fire, they're Norse uh, legend. I believe they were the shield maidens after they've died. Yeah, not positive. I, I should know that better, but okay. So I got a little bit of the distress crayons onto the transfer and I didn't really want them there. So I went ahead and uh, that's just a little bit of water on a paper towel and I'm kind of pulling it back up again. Remember, I do want some of that texture that's from the gesso. So now I'm trying another yellow in here, but this yellow is very green. It's a very green blue yellow. So uh, it did add some brightness. It just wasn't quite the color that I wanted. It's getting closer though. What am I gonna do next? Mm. So I'm just taking a paintbrush and getting the rest of that yellow off of her. And I'm going to paint her this time with a little bit of watercolor. 
and just doing a light wash. You guys know I like to use my Arteza Real Brush Pens here, but I wanted a very loose, light, flowy feeling to her wings and something that I could really blend with the background. But of course, as soon as I put blue over that yellow, I'm going to get green. So I have to just kind of be careful with my placement here. Those are the Arteza watercolor set. It is a really nice portable set. Um, the colors are vibrant and they are also quite saturated so they don't um, fade. I just took a little squirt bottle and squirted it uh, water over the paints. It's an easy way to get all of the uh, paints saturated with water. So I'm deciding that I wanted her to have kind of royal purple velvet cape and that's what I'm putting in here and of course this purple is a great shadow color cool colors in those wings so I'm just kind of putting a little bit here a little bit there I don't want it to look gray I don't want those wings to look gray I want them to stand out though from the background so again I'm using complementary colors opposites on the color wheel yellow and blue and orange and purple are opposites so that's why I'm choosing those colors and plus I love those colors so here I'm just uh, taking a nice paintbrush I believe it's just a flat maybe a quarter inch flat and uh, painting her beautiful outfit giving her kind of some golden armor doing her winged headdress then she does have a little crown above the um, above her hat that she's wearing which doesn't really show up a bunch but okay so here I decided it needed some interesting noise and I am dipping my paint right into the yellows into the oranges and I am splattering it on there. I wanted something really interesting feeling. Now I'm bringing a little bit of yellow over the top of those blues. Again, just trying to make it blend a little bit and uh, seeing what comes of it. So as I lift up the larger droplets it is causing those wings to sit back in the background a little bit more, which I liked. And then I decide to bring in even some darker splatters. Focusing on keeping her face clean. And then um, just playing again with the water over the top of the distressed crayons. Um, it does move what's underneath of it, but look at that cool texture that's coming up from it. Now I have the real brush pens, the Arteza real brush pens. Here I'm starting to really kind of define the image. And I'm bringing in a paintbrush with just some water in it. They are watercolor brushes, so it actually worked out really well to kind of differentiate um, between the background and the foreground and uh, give her some great definition. Again, it's just building it up in layers. And I want it to all feel like it works together and I love how the angel wings uh, ended up turning out. Valkyrie wings, I guess. So I think we're probably getting close, but uh, probably looking for a lighter color. Oh, no, nope, we're just going through and defining her outfit a little bit more, her clothes. The real brush pens can really give you some fine detail. I love using them. You can, like I did up in the wings, you can give them some extra water and make them really react like a watercolor brush, or you can 
use them to really get some great definition, some fine lines. They have a nice fine point to them. Here I'm bringing in some highlight, trying to get those, get her leg and her um, chest plate to be a little bit more visible. Just adding a little bit more yellow in there because I want really to have that golden feel. Walking through the fire. What's next? Hmm. Oop, some more splatters. Uh, you know, things started to look a little bit too smoothed out, and I think this is mainly just water splatters. So as you put water down on top of all that water-soluble material, and then you go in and you blot it with your paper towel, you'll pick up some of the pigment underneath, and it does leave a cool texture behind. Now I'm coming in with a little bit of Stabilo. Trying to be careful with it. I want a little bit of fuzziness. I want her to feel, you know, ephemeral and uh, but I don't want big black smudges on it because that is not what this is all about and so I'm defining that stabilo pushing it in a little bit more with uh, some of that real brush pen again there it is I think she's awesome Okay, guys, have a great day. Bye-bye.